trick or treat. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, welcome back to Pump It Up Philosophy. So, um, before we get started, I'm very happy that the last one was pretty well received. In this video, I'm going to be talking about more my personal stuff that's personal to me, so I don't really have to worry about being objective or not. In this video, I want to talk about 10 pump it up mistakes that I've went through, and I could still possibly going through some, you know, just to reference back. Um, as it stands of this recording, it is very soon to Halloween, Advanced 7 in Pump It Up Phoenix. So these are not going to be written in any order, it's just going to be whatever that just first came to my mind. So the first mistake I would say is becoming over dependent on baby powder. If you don't know what baby powder is, it's the act of adding powder to your shoes or whatever to generally make it so you can slide around more easily without friction. The opposite of this would be like, like Windex and stuff like that to make it clean or just Basically, adding dust or making it more dirty is typically going to make it more slidier. Cleaning up the pads with like water, wipes, Windex is going to make it grippier. So yeah, I always have the issue of overly trying to get the perfect optimal condition. And that led to me kind of being inconsistent and being uh, reliant on, you know, the pads having to be absolute squeak condition. You just got to not think about it. You can't just, it's simply unrealistic to always, you're not always going to be fully warmed up. You're not always gonna feel at perfect condition. You could be a lack of sleep or, uh, you know, you maybe over eight or under eight. Stuff like that and just like um, pad conditions and like how much slip and slide there is, there isn't really much you can control always on that. So trying to hyper focus on if I can like perfectly slide around or if it's too grippy or slidey is generally a bad habit. I still fall guilty of this, of course, but I, as I've grown further into my play style, I've generally become a little bit less reliant on it. My biggest advice about this is just to warm up for longer and then see how your feet are being good at it. both adapting to both slippier pads and grippy pads are beneficial to your skill set. And yeah, um, the biggest time I feel like I was dependent on powder was trying to push 19s and 20s back when I was trying to get like advanced one in XX. The second mistake I made was comparing myself to others. So comparing yourself to others, don't get me wrong, being competitive and trying to push yourself can be healthy to create some friendly competition with rivals. I remember back when I was playing back in New Jersey, like we were trying to just, we we're all playing 18, 19, 20s, trying to get better at the game, trying to get advanced one and stuff like that. And that was all fun in games because I think that was a pretty healthy competition and nothing too, uh, com too serious with it. Um, this definitely changed later on when I did get a little bit into it. Um, I saw some people like that were used to be like technically less skilled than me suddenly pass me in levels and that really discouraged me because there was a certain point in my pump career that I was pretty proficient at increasing my skill set and then suddenly I kind of hit a wall and then other people kind of took me and that definitely um, hit me in the wrong way. So that is not to say if you can compare yourself to others and have friendly rivals and manage it, that's fine. If you're insecure <laughs> or you know, sometimes you're overthinking it or you put too much weight into it. I don't recommend it. There's a healthy balance between competition and then putting too much stress on yourself as a competitor, if that makes any sense. It's good to push yourself. I'm yapping. Next. Um, my third mistake is actually pretty interesting. So this is about scroll speed. So in, when I was uh, around advanced one, I noticed I was using a pr I was using kind of lower um, AV. And what this re resulted me into doing was kind of rushing and not really knowing like it would translate to me like focusing so much on trying to be accurate on my timing without really understanding the um issue that came around it and the reason was simply i was just using a, a too low of an uh, auto velocity i think i was using like 620 630 maybe 640 and uh, yeah just uh, I, I can't really remember why but I feel, I feel like after i just experimented trying a little bit higher um, just there's a lot more visual clarity. Now there's a point that it becomes too much where I've kind of stumbled across this more recently where too high AV could be a little bit overwhelming where I prefer something like doubles like 640 to 650, but that really depends on how the chart is and just how my mood is. And I'll explain that later on as well with the whole, um, if you are nervous, like maybe too high of a scroll speed is bad for you because you might get overwhelmed. Of course, I, that's subjective for everyone, that's just for me at least. Number four was not being uh, kind enough to myself. I 
really had a shitty mindset going into 2023. I was really hard stuck on 19s, 20s, and just trying to get advanced one. Back in 2022, I forgot. It was just like back when I was improving, I pump it up like very quickly between like um, from before to like you know, getting to 18s. You know, there was a certain like if I don't get X skill or title by then, I'm bad at the game. I had a lot of criticism towards myself. I think at a point where you can be harsh on yourself is re reasonable if you have some reasonable expectations. But the way I took it back then was quite unreasonable and just generally pretty harsh on myself. And that just overall just made me really dislike the game. There was actually a point where I was really considering just like retiring competitively and just like maybe focusing on content creation or maybe just being like a coach or charting and stuff like that. There really was a time where I was thinking about that. So yeah, just, just be nice to yourself. You have bad days. I don't think I understood that and I still <laughs> kind of have that issue, but I'm getting there. Number five, definitely an issue that's more like very personal to me. So I was very stubborn about my first level clears. What do you mean by that? So like, let's say you're trying to break into like S16 wall. I just said like, I have to get super fantasy. And this stubbornness allowed me to push for harder first level clears, a lot harder than typically most people would do. So like 16s for me, uh, I did super fantasy on ranked mode um, because I remember Monty was like, yo, ranked mode is the legit way of playing pump it up. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the ranked mode. I did Beethoven Influenza S18 for my first 18 clear. That is a really tough first 18 to get and I was so happy when I got it. So there is a sense of like, I was happy when I did push them because like it did allow me to like push for a song I really liked. All of these are very meaningful achievements for me now, but just like, if you if I wasn't able to do it and I was just beating my head against a wall, I was Keep probably going. just limiting myself to just like the amount of pool, like map pool I can play. So I think the higher levels you go, and thankfully I learned this, it's like, I don't care. If I get Sorceries at least S23, as my first 23, even though it's not 23, then that would be it. I, I, don't, I don't really care. I used to have a lot more care about it, but now I don't. You can just honestly just tell yourself if you think it's like a subjective rating and then just call it that, so yeah. I think, so for my sixth mistake is actively avoiding my weaknesses. So I I think my weakest skill sets uh, in pump, I would say I'm generally decently well-rounded for most things, but foot speed and like runs, I'm not really the best at, and I kind of just avoided charts with them. So like Mr. Warpus S20, that shit is hard for me. That is really hard for me. And like some of the more straightforward run charts like S20s that are just more sustained runs, 21s and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely avoided that. And if you want to become better at the game, you shouldn't just avoid that stuff, even though I really don't like it. I still kind of have this issue, but I've gotten better at runs where I've been just slowly pushing them a bit more. So I've gotten better at them. It's still something I got to actively work on. But yeah, that's a mistake you shouldn't underlook. Number seven is pretty interesting actually it's the freedom mod so freedom mod essentially disables the hit receptors that are right above the you know where you hit your nose or the hp bar and i'm not gonna lie i think freedom kind of hindered my um hindered me a little bit now freedom is not a deal breaker per se it's just i noticed myself playing generally better without it especially on the accuracy component and just really knowing when i hit the notes I don't know how to really describe it. I mean, I will say eventually once I did get better at timing and accuracy, it generally translated with uh, freedom scores, but generally I would have lower accuracy scores with freedom, for me at least. There's still some situational times where I would prefer freedom for like some run charts or if I really just want to get rid of that mind block or have that extra level of where I can see the notes. But uh, just noticed at the time when I made a few adjustments where 16, 17, 18s, 19s, uh, Visual clarity for me and timing made a bit more sense after I disabled freedom back when I was using the normal hit receptors. Again, more of a niche uh, issue. Number eight, title obsession. This goes kind of back to my, I learned a lot of things from the beginning of 2023 when I was just trying to get XX uh, advanced title level one. I remember the servers were about to turn off and I was really, or at least there was a time where I wanted it and then there was time that I gave up. But again, at the end of XX, my enjoyment for the game was really low because I was just trying to just push for something I really just wanted and I really couldn't get. So I put a lot of emotional weight towards that. This still kind of holds true to some like of the current advanced titles I have where it's just like, I'm just doing this because I want to just get it kind of. 
I got advanced one in Phoenix like January and I wanted to make it like a goal for myself to get like expert one for example. Who knows if that'll happen? I I was thinking about it and then like there's so many other side goals I want to think about because the game for me is pump it up. It's not just about title obsession. It's about enjoying the game. And I think just beating your head against the wall and just pushing constantly is that fun. It can be fun. Don't get me wrong, it can be very fun. But when you don't get it, it's kind of frustrating. So uh, at first I really cared about trying to get maybe advanced one by January and I was hopeful about it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get it anymore. I just, I don't know, I don't really see it in me. I think advanced 10 is more likely, which I'm going to still be working hard to try to push myself, of course. But again, um, title obsession and like obsessing over your like, time goals are so... Don't put so much pressure on that time goal. It can be a useful motivator. It could also just suffocate you. And for my case, it suffocates me, so yeah. Number nine, I technically used the same thing before, so I'll just skip to number 10. This kind of goes back to the whole title obsession, but set reasonable expectations. And overall, like, what do you ultimately want with your sessions? Because you shouldn't, like, like your session is so much more than just pushing yourself or getting queers. Did you have a fun time ultimately with the game? I feel like that's the most important thing centrally, honestly. Like, did you have a good time with like some friends afterwards, like no bar or co-op and stuff like that? That to me is still intrinsic values of what makes Pump It Up such a social, interesting activity and just be a overall great time. So I don't think this was exactly 10 tips or 10 mistakes I've made, but uh, that's some of them at least. I guess a little bonus thing was just like constantly changing the uh, command, command window settings. It's still kind of fun for me, but um, I really changed my AV a lot. I kind of do it too often. At the time, I was really... I couldn't really find the correct note skin for me, so I kept constantly switching it, which is probably not the best for muscle memory. And maybe in the future, I'll probably talk about an issue about this, but probably like JT minus JT obsession of like timing and like accuracy scores. But um, I still don't have the most experience or time with it to really make my own judgments about it. So, what do you guys think about my mistakes? Did you resonate with any of them? Are some of them? There's some of them are definitely more niche to myself, but um, yeah, I hope this provides some insight and just things to look out for if you're just starting out to not fall under a pitfall when you start your own pumping up career or just as you play along. So yeah, 